Okay, so let me just share my screen. Okay, so can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, and also let me just check if you guys are older are everybody ready or already in front of your computers? So I can just give me a thumbs up again. Okay, great. So most of you are already here. Okay, so after solving, you know, those two tables, this one is for the left side and then this one is for the right side, then we can now have the superimposed values. Okay, so when we see superimposed values, those are the combined values of those two sets. Okay, so... Uh, and here, when superimposing these values of voltage and current, we have to be very careful to consider the polarity, okay? So the positive, negative, negative, positive. So if we have an opposing uh, polarities, then it will be deducted with each other, okay? But if they have the same like this one, positive minus, positive uh, minus, then they'll be added with each other. So 4 plus 4 is equal to 8, okay? So let's just have another sheet right here. Okay, so let me just get the uh, final flow of current. So this is for the left side. So this is the final uh, polarity, okay, for the left side for the 28 volts. And then we also have here the right side values and then the final uh, polarities. Okay. And then let me get the table right here. It's too big. Let me shrink this one into a smaller. There you go. So though it became a little bit pixelated. Well, anyway, so uh, let's start with voltage. So everything that you can see right here are the computations of voltages, okay? So meaning we're going now to fi uh, finalize the values of your voltage drops. Okay, so for the R1 and then R1 right here, so as you guys can see, we have positive, okay? And then negative and then negative and then positive. Okay? And then we have a voltage drop of 24 and then 4 right here. So in here, basically, uh, one of them will be deducted to the uh, other voltage. So here's the rule of thumb that you guys always need to remember. Okay, so we have this higher voltage or the VH, okay, minus VL, okay, is equal to final voltage in that circuit. Okay, so in here, the higher voltage is the 24 minus the lower voltage, which is 4 volts. So in here, you don't need, you don't need to uh, uh, think what is the polarity of this one? Is this positive? Is this negative? Is this positive? Oops. Is this positive? Is this negative? No. Okay. So the higher voltage is always positive. The lower voltage is always positive. Okay. So they are always positive. So the only one that will be determined is the, uh, you know, the subtraction value right here. And then which one will come first? And then which, will, uh, which one will be the uh, second one? Okay. Or which one will be deducted to the higher uh, voltage so in here whichever is the higher voltage that is the pH and then whichever is the lower voltage that is the VL since as we all know in voltage whichever is the higher that will be the one that will most likely dominate uh, dominate the entire uh, flow of circuit or the voltage uh, of the circuit okay so that is why in here we have 24 minus 4 is equal to 20 volts so that is uh, that's it for the R1. Okay. So are we clear so far? And how did we get this 20 volts right here? Okay. And then of course, whichever is the higher voltage, that is the one that uh, we'll get as the final polarity. Okay. So the final polarity of this one is now positive and then negative. Okay. So for the R2, so it's the same concept, okay? So we have uh, R2 right here, which is 4 volts, and then R2, which is also 4 volts. And then as you guys can see, they have the same polarity. So all we need to do is add them, okay? 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. And then, of course, we still have the same polarity, positive and then negative right here. 
And then for the R3, so uh, again, we have an opposing voltage. So we have positive, negative, and then negative, positive. So whichever is the higher, that will be the VH. And then whichever is the lower, that will be the VL. So as you guys can see, uh, the uh, 4 volts right here is higher. So 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 volt. And then uh, since this is the polarity of the higher voltage, then we also need to get that one as the final polarity of our uh, voltage on the R3, which is positive and then negative. Okay, so are we clear? And how did we get those final values? Okay, very good. All right, so let me just get the final circuit of this one. So of course, uh, after having so in unit kasha, let me just uh, shrink this one. So of course, after having those final values of the R1, R2, and R3, then you can now get the uh, symbols: positive, negative for the R1, positive, negative for the R2, positive, negative for the R3, and then their values: twenty, eight, and then one. Okay. So those now are the final voltage drop across R1, R2, and R3. Okay, so again, I'll give you guys 10 seconds to check if we have the same. And then you know, also for you to be able to uh, internalize everything. Okay, kung naintindan nyo ba talaga. So just, just give me a thumbs up uh, once you're done on, or once uh, you're good already. Very good, Mr. Uh, Maris. Ah, Miss Maris. Sorry, Mr. Maris. Naman. Miss Maris. Okay, very good, Mr. Uh, Isagani. Okay, very good, Miss Ginran. Very good, Mr. Gonzalez. Okay, Aba, Sir Basara. Okay, great. So that's it for the uh, voltage drops. Okay, so let's now move on. Oops, we don't have space anymore. Okay, tuna tayo sa kanan. Okay, so let's now move on for the uh, currents. Okay, so the same. So we have to uh, be wary on the flow of current. Okay, so uh, also let me get... Okay, di na lang. Base natin dito. Okay, let me get this one. And then paste it right here. Okay, let me shrink it a little. And let's get the table for the currents. Ah, voltage pala to. Oops. Nakuha. Let me also shrink this one. There you go. Okay. So in here, the same concept. Uh, however, the one that we are now going to follow is the arrow. Okay. So we have here the uh, I1. Okay. I1. We have here the I2. Yeah. I2. And then we have here the I3. Okay. So for the I1, as you guys can see, we have 6 amps going on the right. And then 1 amp going on the left. So we have an opposing uh, current. So in here, we also have the same uh, rule of thumb when it comes to currents. So uh, instead of V, we now have I H minus I L. Okay, this is equal to the final uh, value of current. Okay, value and polarity of current. Okay, so in here uh, on the uh, I one, okay. So IH is equal to 6, so that is the higher uh, flow of current, and then 1 is the lower flow of current. So I1 is equal to 6 minus 1, this is equal to 5 amp. Okay, which is now this one.
Okay. And then of course, if we have to get the, uh, you know, the higher uh, symbol of that one, okay, or, or the flow of current, which is uh, going to the right. So we now have the five amp going to uh, the right. So are we clear on how did we get the I1? What about the others? Okay, very good, Mr. Uh, Isagani. Okay, very good, Mr. Maaba, Miss Maris, Mr. Francis, Miss Leah, Miss Sophia, Miss Grace, Miss Cameron, Miss Nathaniel, Miss Carla. Okay, great. So most of you were able to get this one. Okay, so uh, in here, uh, once you've understood the uh, I1, then you cannot simply follow the I2. So as you guys can see, we have the same flow of current. So 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 amp. And then for the I3, we have an opposing current. So 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 amp. Okay, so again, whichever is the higher, and that is your first operand. And then whichever is the lower, that is your uh, second uh, operand. And let me just copy the final flow of currents, final diagram. Okay. So in here we have five amps for the R1 and then one amp for the R3 and then four amps for the R2. Okay. So this one is super logical if you're going to apply KCL. Okay, so I1 is uh, entering, so it's positive, and then we have I3 and I2 as living. So uh, I entering is equal to I living. So four plus one is also equal to five. Okay, so are we clear on how did we get those values? Any questions so far? So I guess none. So that's actually it for the superposition theorem. Okay. So uh, for more uh, examples or videos, so feel free to visit this uh, YouTube link. So they are free. Okay. So just click them. So maybe you can still pick some uh, new, you know, new ways, new knowledge on how to solve or how to apply superposition theorem. Okay. So we have two links for this one. And uh, here is like the summary or the conclusion for the superposition theorem. So superposition theorem works only for circuits that are reducible to series or parallel combinations. Okay, so if it's not possible to shrink it into a series or parallel uh, circuit, then you have to use the other method, like maybe Maxwell. Okay, so that is uh, one, uh, comp you know, uh, one uh, good theorem for complex uh, circuit. Okay. So again, thus this theorem is useless for an, an analyzing an unbalanced bridge circuit. And it only works where the underlying equations are linear, means no mathematical powers or roots. So when we see a uh, linear, we have a one is to one. If we have a voltage that is uh, going up, then that only means that we must also have a current that is going up, okay? But if we have an increasing voltage, but the current is still, uh, still stays the same, then that is not linear anymore. So what are those components that will make it non-linear? So if we have, let's say, lumps like incandescent or gas discharge or body stores. So yeah, superposition to time is not uh, possible to apply anymore, okay? So they are only applicable if we have the RCL, the resistance car, uh, capacitor inductor, and then voltage source and then uh, current source. But if we have other components like this one, then superposition theorem is not applicable, okay? And then one more limitation of a superposition theorem is you can only solve the individual voltage and currents, but not the power. Okay, so that is one thing that you guys need to take note, okay? So power dissipations is uh, being nonlinear functions, right? So do not algebraically add to an accurate total when only one source is considered at a time. So when say, uh, you know, solving for power, you have to solve it as one, okay? So you cannot uh, solve the uh, power across uh, R3 if you only have this uh, right side uh, set, okay? So it must be two at the same time, 
Okay, so with that, it's now possible to solve for the power across R3, power across R2, power across R1. Okay, so yeah, those are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of the superposition theorem. Okay, so uh, another prerequisite for superposition theorem is that all components must be bilateral, meaning that be, uh, they behave the same with electrons flowing in uh, either directions through them. So when you say bilateral, if uh, you did the opposite, like for example, uh, uh, the one th uh, that we applied in here is the conventional method, but if we applied the uh, electron method, you know, the uh, other way around, so you must still have the same result, okay? And resistors have no polarity specific behavior, and so the circuits we've been studying so far all meet this uh, criterion. So last one is the superposition theorem finds use in the study of alternating CAD AC okay, or AC circuits and semiconductor amplifier circuits, where sometimes uh, AC as uh, often mix superimposed with DC. Okay, because AC voltage and current equations, uh, Ohm's law are linear just like DC. Okay, so we can use superposition to theorem to analyze the circuit with just the DC power source, then just the AC power source combining the result to tell what will happen with both AC and DC sources in effect. For now though, superposition will suffice as a break for uh, from having to do simultaneous equation to analyze a circuit. Okay, so uh, it's also possible in some, okay, in some only, but uh, mostly when you see AC, uh, that is now where uh, non-linear components will be coming from. Okay, but there are still some, you know, it's still possible. And yeah, so another one. Okay, so again, just a reminder. So, uh, superposition theorem states that a circuit can be analyzed with only one source of power at a time. Okay, so I think uh, you guys already know that one. And then, of course, if it's a voltage, uh, just uh, short it. And then, if it's a current, just uh, simply break it. And then, here's my reference for this uh, module. Okay, so this one came from All About Circuits, but yeah, so feel free to visit this one just in case you need more explanations. But uh, if this one is not enough, then feel free to visit the other two reference, the tutorial tutorials point, and then the circuit loop. So those two are also super helpful when it comes to explaining the superposition theorem. Okay, and if they are still not enough, then you can search for other uh, articles wherein explaining about superposition theorem. Okay, so yeah, that's actually it for the superposition theorem. So any questions so far? Questions or clarifications? Or if none, just give me a thumbs up so we can now proceed to the uh, last module for these midterms. Great, so it seems that most of you doesn't really have a question, so that's a good thing. Anyway, again, just a reminder. So the due date of your quiz for Gear Jobs and then Maxwell is today. So uh, I would like you guys to do this one now to those who haven't, uh, you know, finished their quiz in Gear Jobs and Maxwell. So please uh, do them now as soon as possible. So the due date of this one is at exactly 11.59. Uh, AM, ah, PM rather, okay. So after that, it's already July 6th, so uh, you won't be having a chance anymore to uh, do this one. Okay, so the next one is, of course, the nodal voltage analysis. So one more thing. So uh, please visit those three uh, external websites. So I, I, uh, I just search that, uh, you know, uh, you can also have a superposition theorem quiz on quizzes, so uh, this is a good thing. So practice your knowledge when it comes to uh, superposition with this uh, our website. And then we also have here a website called uh, Stan Foundry, so please check this one also. This is also super helpful, especially for uh, beginners when it comes to superposition theorem. And the same with this one, so it's like uh, objective questions, so what do you think about this one? Is this uh, blah, blah, blah. So you can also test your uh, knowledge when it comes to superposition uh, with this one, okay? 
All right, so yeah. And then the last one is nodal voltage analysis. So let's go with the nodal voltage analysis. All right, so are you guys ready now for the uh, last module? Okay, so again, if ever that you have, yes. Sir, unrelated question for the subject long ask. So what is your question? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Go on. Sir, nagpa-enroll po ako noon, sir, sa inyo. Tapos, nagpakita po yung schedule. Ay, sinan nyo po yung schedule ko. Tapos, after uh, nakita ko po doon sa canvas ko, sir, may missing po na isang subject. Sir. Ah, kasi maraming mga na-dissolve. So, may mga uh, ganong factor din na, like, for example, uh, uh, the minimum student in that class should be 15 or 18 or 20. Pero hindi niya na na-meet, let's say, 18 lang sila out of 20 or 15 lang out of 20, so pwedeng na-dissolve. Uh, ganun. So that is one uh, uh, possibility. Kasi, okay, sir. Uh, wala namang ibang magtatanggal nun, maliban na lang kung pinadrop mo. Okay, so... Sige po, sir. Thank you, sir. Pwedeng ganun yung mangyari. Okay, so uh, one thing, dapat sinacheck nyo kapag katapos na ng parang final enrollment, kasi pwede pa siyang ipad eh, just in case may nawala or may uh, nadagdag ganun. So, dapat pinapacheck nyo or sinacheck nyo from time to time kasi dun yung crucial eh. May mga natatanggal may mga nabakabala. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Alright, so any other concerns or questions? Okay, so I guess then. So, let me just ask this question, guys. So, how are your laboratories? So, I hope lahat kayo may labs dito. So, are you guys doing good with lab uh, with laboratory? Can you guys follow the step by step instruction? Seems that uh, most of you are quite confused. Well, uh, that's normal. But right now, is it okay? Are you guys doing good? Only Mr. Izagani uh, is doing good. What about the others? What are your uh, issues or concerns? Ah, okay. Uh, from Mr. Carlos, so may isa lang daw, and then uh, okay naman na daw. Well, anyway, so that's uh, really part of learning. So that is why you have to, you know, spend at least maybe two hours, three hours. You know, just try to experiment, you know, start with simple. Kaya nga sobrang simple ng... Uh, lab 1 nyo. Hanggang lab 3, I think sobrang simple na mga yun. Mga series, parallel, and then uh, kalikutin nyo lang. Okay. Hanggang sa maintindihan nyo, i-relate nyo lang siya on, you know, the things that you've learned in lecture, and then relate it on the uh, simulation, which is the other space. Okay, try to compare if you have the same result or no, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, it will be super helpful once uh, you've learned uh, how to use uh, the other space. Well, anyway, so uh, I just wanted to know. Okay, so here's the last module for uh, the midterm. So we'll call this one modal voltage analysis. So in here, uh, this one is super simple. All you need to know is the KCL and then the Ohm's law. So I would say that 10% uh, KCL and then 90% more on the Ohm's law. Okay, so uh, here, uh, uh, I would say that uh, this is super uh, advantageous in everything, especially if we have multiple voltages, okay? Because in a uh, superposition theorem, yes, it's good if we have multiple uh, voltage source, but, uh, you know, but uh, it's time consuming, okay? But in nodal voltage analysis, so this one is one time big time, even though you have multiple uh, voltages, let's say two or three or four, uh, that's still possible, okay? Because, uh, you know, having a nodal voltage analysis is uh, super flexible as long as, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're doing uh, the correct way on how to solve things in Ohm's law, then I think uh, you're good to go. Okay. 
So in here, uh, from the word nodal, okay, so we're going to solve the voltage across A, voltage across node B, voltage across node C, and then voltage across node D, okay? And then we can only do that one if we're going to apply KCL on the super node. So yes, this is a node, this is also a node, but uh, take note, we have to find the super node, okay? So when you say super node, it is a node we're in. Uh, it is where uh, most of our components are being uh, connected. So uh, in here, we only have two components that is connected. In here, we have only two, okay? Uh, in here, we only have uh, one, okay? Or three, say three. But this one is the reference uh, node, so most likely uh, this is always uh, equal to zero. So the one that is uh, called as a super node in here is the VB, okay? So this is our super node, and then this is where we need to apply the KCL, okay? So nodal voltage analysis finds the unknown uh, voltage traps around the circuit between different nodes that provide a common connection for two or more circuit components, okay? So uh, and here, again, you only need the um, Kirchhoff's first law or the KCL, okay? And then so by adding together all these nodal voltage uh, voltages, the net result will be equal to zero. Then if there are, uh, let's say, first node, and then second node, and third node, then all you need to do is uh, add them together, okay? And then equate that one to zero, okay? Just like what we have on the uh, KCL or the Kirchhoff's first law, okay? So again, just a, you know, uh, a review wherein, when say, KCL, the currents entering a node are exactly equal in the value to the currents uh, leaving the node, okay? So after that one, you can now apply the Ohm's law, okay, using that uh, KCL expression. So to do that one, okay, let me just copy this one first. And then we should arrive with this kind of equation. So let me just delete everything. Okay, so in here, again, you only need to apply KCL on VB. KCL at node B. Okay, just call that one B. So in here, we have I1, which is entering, and then I2, which is entering, and then I3, which is leaving. So entering is positive, then leaving is negative. This is equal to zero. So in here, again, all you need to have is this expression. I1 is equal to Ah, my bad. I1 plus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Okay. So I hope uh, we're good with this one. And how did we get this uh, KCL equation? Since, you know, uh, it's already a uh, long or past topic already. So as of now, uh, you should already know how to uh, have or how to uh, get this kind of equation using KCL. So again, let me just ask you guys, are we good? And how did we get this I1 plus I2 minus I3? Okay. Okay, so dalawa lang, tatlo. Well, anyway, so I hope the others were able to uh, get this one. So after that, then all you need to uh, think about is on how, did, how to get the uh, I1, I2, and I3, okay? So if you guys can recall, uh, oops, not that one. You guys can recall, I is equal to V divided by R, right? So we can actually replace this I1 into V1 divided by R1. Or, okay, we can have a different uh, approach wherein we the use of uh, the rule of thumb wherein VH minus VL, okay? So... Uh, in here, if we wanted to get the potential voltage of VB, okay, then we need to know this kind of uh, equation, the VH minus VL. So again, what is our VH in here? So of course, as you guys can see, it's the VA, okay, minus VL. So VL is the VB. So how do we know that VA is higher than VB? Because as you guys can see, this is the, uh, you know, the raw voltage. Uh, 
there's no uh, deduction for this one, so it's still 10 volts. But upon passing through this uh, resistance right here, the uh, 10 ohms, of course, you will now have a lower uh, potential voltage. Okay, so uh, that's basically the idea on how did we know that VB is the uh, lower voltage. Okay, so VA minus VB is equal to uh, VB. Okay, so yeah. That is the final value of uh, VB right here. Okay. For the final value, okay. para naman hindi VB tapos VB ulit. Okay? So in here, we can actually use this uh, concept right here wherein we can replace this V right here or the VR1 okay, right here using this equation. So we can replace this V right here, okay, using this VA minus VB. So after having that one, we can now have, let's say, I1 is equal to VA minus VB divided by, so let's just name this one as R1. Okay, para naman hindi magulo R1, and then this is your R2, and then this is your uh, R3. So we now have the equation of I1 is equal to VA minus VB divided by VA minus VB divided by R1. Okay, so that is the equation of this I1 right here. So were you guys able to follow so far on how did we get this equation for the I1? So let me just put here again. Anagulo na iba. I1 is equal to V1 divided by R1, right? So for us to be able to get this V1, this one came from this VA minus VB. Okay, the potential voltage across uh, this one. Okay, where in V1 is equal to VA minus VB, and then R1 uh, remains the same. Okay. So once you've understood the I1, then I guess you can now easily uh, get the other values for the I2. So if we are going to apply the same, so of course we have I2 is equal to V2 divided by R2. Okay. So in here, V2 is equal to so the higher voltage is this vc right here minus the lower voltage which is vb so vc ah my bad i2 v2 divided by r atama okay vc minus vb okay so again we can now use this vc minus vb to replace this v2 right here and then we will now have uh, vc minus vb divided by R2 minus. Okay, so what about this uh, IT right here? Are we clear on how did we get this uh, VC minus VB divided by R2? So it's like, you know, the same as getting the potential voltage on the left side and then potential voltage on the right side. Okay, same with the, like the uh, superposition theorem. But in here, it's as one. Okay, we are solving everything uh, with the uh, complete uh, voltage sources. So are we clear up to this point so far? Okay, great. So uh, again, uh, we don't have enough time anymore, so we'll just continue the rest on the part three. Okay, so goodbye for now and then see you guys later.